comes to nail clipping, all dogs are going to fall into one of these categories. The first one is absolutely terrified. And I'm talking, you might actually have to go to your vet and get prescribed medication for them because it is that stressful. We're talking fight or flight and they might do things like alligator roll, urinate, defecate during the process. This is like the worst of the worst. The next one is just flat out hate the process. So this dog is gonna do absolutely everything possible to make your life hard to get the nail trim done. Now, again, not like the first category, they don't require medication. They are just simply fighting you the entire time. They're pulling their paws, they're moving their bodies, you know, they just hate it. The next one is going to be tolerance. And this is a dog who just, you know, they don't love the process, but they don't hate it either. They're just gonna do what they're told. They're not happy about it, but they're not they're not gonna run away, they're not gonna pull, they're not gonna make your life hard. They're just simply tolerating the process. You might see them kind of neutral, standing like a statue, that kind of thing. Another one on the list is acceptance. And this is a dog that, you know, might enjoy the process a little bit. You know, something, some aspect of it they do not mind but it is not that dog's favorite thing. They don't absolutely love it. You know, it's just possibly for the rewards more than anything. It is, you know, maybe it's from praise, petting, treats, whatever your reward process is, that's probably what they enjoy about the process. And the last category, the most rare out of all of them, trust me, and I have done <laughs> probably thousands of dogs at this point, throughout my 15 year career. And these are the dogs who love nail clipping. I'm talking about like, they get excited when they see the nail clippers or the Dremel. And when you tell them it is time for a nail trim, they actually kind of get excited about it. And uh, it can happen, trust me, it really can. Personally, my own dogs are not on that level. They, I wouldn't say they love it. I mean, they're, they see the nail clippers and they get up onto the table where I want them to, you know, but I'm pretty sure they're in it just for the treats. So I would actually uh, put them at a lower level than loving it. I think they accept it. But like anything in life, you can get better and your dog can get better and Ascension up this whole categories list is basically the, the entire goal. And what should be a minimum on the list is the tolerance. You want your dog to at least tolerate the process. I mean, it would be great if they accept it, be great if they love it, but if you can at least get tolerance from your dog, you're really getting somewhere. You're making the whole process not as scary. But here's what I know from not only my own experience, but from my viewers and my clients, but a lot of dogs have had prior bad experience. And this could be, you know, maybe they're a rescue. Maybe you tried it yourself and you cut their quick and it bled and it was painful and now they absolutely hate the process of having their nails clipped and you're kind of sitting at a lower level and you're wondering how do I get up there? There are other circumstances too and maybe you just didn't know about it. Maybe you have a senior dog and that senior dog, you know, sometimes they can actually descend down a list as well as they age because things tend to get scarier when you can't hear as good, when you can't see as good. Maybe they have some sort of dementia, that happens as well. So there are a set of circumstances where you can actually kind of downgrade down the list as well. And that's what I'm here to help you with today. So with this technique, it's going to help all dogs become successful for at home nail clipping. Actually, nail clipping in general. It's not gonna be at home, but this is a process you're going to instill at home. So you're gonna have the most success at home, but it will transfer over as well. And this is through a process of desensitization and that is to the tools, the sounds, and finally the entire process. Now, I am sure that you're here because you know the importance of nail health when it comes to not only structure, but longevity, as well as just overall health when it comes to your pet. This video is not a tutorial, although I do have tutorials already on my channel, and I have a couple of them, and they are really helpful, and I'm gonna link them above and below for you in case you wanna take a look and you need instructions on just basically how the overall process works, what you're looking for, I can help you out with that, and I will link those videos for you as well. Okay, let's break this down. All the way back in 1897, a Russian physiologist named Ivan Pavlov, you might have heard of him, published the results of his experiment that he had been conducting. Pavlov actually observed in his experiments that the dogs that he was using salivated when they were fed red meat. 
He further noticed that when the technician who actually fed the dogs came into the, the room and was in the presence of the dogs, that they actually began salivating just when he arrived. He it just took his presence to begin the salivation process. So he decided to put these observations into more of an experimental test. And basically he presented a stimulus in the form of a metronome and then gave the dogs food. Now, after a few repetitions, the dogs actually started to salivate in response to the stimulus. So the metronome or rather the sound of the metronome. So basically with this, he concluded that if a particular stimulus in the dog's surrounding was present when the dogs were given food, then that stimulus could become associated with the food and cause the salivation. So in Pavlov's experiments, there was the unconditioned stimulus, US for short. And that was the food because its effects did not depend on previous experience. The metronome sound is originally a neutral stimulus because it did not elicit any sort of salivation in the dogs. After conditioning the dogs though, the metronome sound became an uh, what is called a conditional stimulus or a CS because of its effects and overall that association or link with the food through the dogs. So likewise, the responses elicited by the dogs actually follow kind of the same idea, a conditioned versus unconditioned arrangement. So what am I saying here? The conditioned response or a CR is a response to a conditioned stimulus, CS, whereas an unconditioned response corresponds to the unconditioned stimulus. So Basically, the conditioned response, the CR, is the drooling to the conditioned stimulus, which is the metronome. So now I know what you're all thinking. Why is this important? Well, we aren't trying to make dogs drool when we trim their nails, right? <laughs> so you can count that out. It actually has to do with the thing that Pavlov discovered in his experiment. Basically, conditioning. And no, even though I am a groomer, I'm not talking about the kind that you put on your dog. What am I saying? Nail clipping reactions from our list earlier can actually become a CR. So their CR might be that extreme fear. Their CR might be that they love it. Their CR might be that they accept it, that they tolerate it. That is their conditioned response to the nail clipping process. So in some of those, it's basically just being afraid was what they were conditioned to because the whole process became very scary because you didn't condition the dog to the stimulus. You need a conditioned stimulus to elicit a conditioned response. So you need to condition happy feelings or, you know, rewarding experiences to the nail clippers in order to make their response to be happy. Is this kind of all making sense? I hope it is. So what I'm trying to say is any dogs who have ever had their nails trimmed has a conditioned response, whether or not you knew that from the start. The problem is the stimulus. So that's where the starting point is. The tools are what needs to become conditioned. And so with some dogs, they might already actually have a conditioned stimulus and that might be that they don't like it. They may run away from the sound of the Dremel, from the sight of the nail clippers or the sight of the Dremel. They may hide, they may shake, you know, all these things are just conditioned responses. And the good news is you can actually change their conditioned response with a few dedicated steps. First step is establishing a positive condition response and that is to the sight of the tools. The sound of the tools, the touching of the tools to their feet, the individual toes, just basically all the sensations and sights and sounds and smells but we aren't gonna cut the nails yet. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to grab a bag or a box. It really doesn't matter anything just some sort of container. And you're gonna put different objects into this bag or this box. And I'm not talking about grooming related things. You're not gonna throw, you know, nail clippers, your Dremel, a brush, like a dog brushing brush, a comb that you use on them, their shampoo. Those are not the things that you're gonna put in there. I'm talking about things that you can see around you currently. It could be a pen, 
It could be some clips, a jar of clips. That's what I have here. It could be some cotton wipes. It could be shoes. Maybe you have a sandal, one sandal. It doesn't matter. A roll of tape. It, I'm talking about literally just anything. Just neutral objects. I am seriously saying just look around you and grab two to four things. Simple as that. And then you're going to put them in the bag with the nail clippers or the Dremel, whatever you're trying to kind of desensitize. And don't overthink it. Next, in a container or a Ziploc bag or something of the sort, doesn't really have to be anything crazy, um, you're just going to put some high value treats. And I'm talking about like the high ranking stuff, the things your dog love, cheese, meat, stinky things, things they love, you know, just it again, don't overthink it. Whatever your dog enjoys and can have and really values, that's what you're going to put in there. Put it in a Ziploc bag, put it in a container, stick it in that bag as well. Now here's where I might lose a few of you because you're going to think I'm a little crazy, but call your dog into that room, sit down and take out each object without saying a word. Literally, do not speak. Then you're going to hold it out in front of them. Let them see it, smell it, whatever they want to do, and then put that back in the bag. Seriously, like this. Hold it up. Back in the bag. Two seconds. That's all it takes. Now, the only difference is when you get to the clippers or the Dremel, you're going to want to have a treat in your hand. I will demonstrate. I have a treat right here. I have my clippers. When I grab it from the bag, I'm going to hold it in the same hand. You're going to present it and you're going to feed the treat. Just like that. Just there you go. And you just cycle through the bag a couple of times, give them a treat when they see the Dremel or the nail clippers, and that's it. Okay, and this is where some choice comes in. Depending on what your schedule looks like, how much time you have to devote to this, you can do this over the course of days, weeks, doesn't matter. You can do it a couple of times a day, you can do it in the morning, you can do it at night a few times, rotate. And then you also want to switch rooms as well when you do it. So don't stay in the same room. They're going to start associating the treats sometimes with the room you're in and you don't want that. So basically just kind of keep it as random as you possibly can. Switch the other things in the bag too. Switch the bag as well. Just kind of every time it, it, it changes, the only thing that's consistent is your nail clipper, your Dremel and the treat. And this process really doesn't take long to cycle through the entire bag. So, you know, it really shouldn't take you more than a minute to get through the whole thing, but it's really super quick and really super easy. So it makes it really easy for it to work around your schedule. So now basically you might've done this a few times, or maybe you're just wondering what is the point that you reach when you can move forward from this? And well, it's basically just a clear indication that your dog is anticipated, probably in a seated position, maybe a down position, and they're just ideally still really close to you, just kind of waiting for that nail clipper to present itself so they know they get the treat. That's it. There's a relaxed disposition. It might include tail wagging. It might include prick deers. Basically, just when your dog is content and in anticipation of seeing those nail clippers or that Dremel. Also, they should be confident and happy when taking the treat from your hand with the nail clipper in it. They shouldn't be kind of jolting backwards as soon as they have the treat. It should be just very relaxed. The whole process relaxed, that's when you know you can move forward. Once you have this down, you can move to the next step, which is the sound. And now Dremels, they're easy. You can turn them on. They make a sound. Nail clippers. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, they don't really make a sound. I can open and close them, but that's about all they do. Well, grab some uncooked spaghetti because that is what it's going to sound like when you clip a nail. So you're going to stick this spaghetti through the nail clipper and just chop it. That's it. So same thing with the sound. You're going to repeat in different rooms with different objects until the dog is still confident, happy, relaxed, and that includes is basically with the added sounds. So you're gonna cycle through all that, adding the sounds in and same thing. You're looking for that happy, relaxed disposition to move on to the next step. So now we're moving along, all right? Our dogs are happy with the sound, they're confident, they're feeling good, you're feeling good, we're ready to move on. So depending on your preference, you can have your dog either in a down position or a standing. I prefer standing, it is just my preference. And this is since I have a grooming table and I want my dogs to stand. That's it, that's, that's just me. 
it might be easier for you at home to have them in a down and that is completely fine. I actually do have another video on my channel. I'll link it again above and below on how to clip nails in a down position if you're not sure how to do that. But either way, what we are doing is we're going to begin getting your dog conditioned to how you want them to be during the process. You're going to put them into position, whether that's your down or your stand, and reward them. Then you can move along to petting them and rewarding them. Once you're petting and rewarding them, the idea is you're gradually building that this is a fun and rewarding experience and it involves touch and it involves different sensations and you're just, you guys are bonding. It's fun. That's what the treats are for. Make sure you offer a lot of rewards. Touch is good. It leads to treats. That's the idea. So after petting the back, you're going to make your way down, moving down the body, the legs, the feet, each individual toe, kind of pushing them forward, playing around with it, essentially the same idea and rewarding. Now, what I was saying earlier, basically, you're rewarding for each step. So say if they react poorly to having their foot touch, well, go backwards, touch their leg, reward, and end your session. Where they are comfortable, you move back to that spot and you reward them because you always want to end on a good note. If your dog is reacting poorly and you end it there, they might start kind of thinking like I can just, if I move around and flail, then mom or dad is going to stop the process. And that's not what we're doing. We're not creating that behavior. What we're doing is we're rewarding for the behavior we want to see. And you're going to take them back to where they were comfortable. It might just be standing. If, you know, you start touching their foot and they're, you know, freaking out, Maybe just reward for standing. Maybe just reward for laying down. That's okay too. Basically, you're gonna work forward and anytime your dog kind of gives you a sign that, whoa, that's too much, you move back to where they were comfortable, reward and your session. This builds trust and it bonds with them as well. So, and it's gonna build confidence because they're gonna say, hey, if I'm not comfortable with that, you know, I'm not being forced into it, but hey, I was comfortable with this and that was good, I got a reward for that. So it's gonna build up that confidence slowly in order to tolerate the, the whole process essentially, but you're gonna to wanna to reward the behavior that you're gonna to want to see out of them while you're trimming their nails. What you are looking for in the end, basically what you're working towards is that your dog can comfortably stand or lay down and have their feet and individual toes manipulated. And once they can do that comfortably, they're showing no signs of stress. That is the key to move forward. Without that, just keep working on it. Once you're there, we're gonna start kind of merging the first layer with the second layer, if that makes sense. Take your tool and you're gonna touch their back. You're gonna touch down their shoulder, their leg, their feet. So if you have a Dremel, it's in off. That's important. We haven't added the sound in yet. We're just doing sight and then touch. So. If you can touch those body parts and your dog is good, you have to get to the toes though. Once you're down to the toes and everything's good, reward and then you can move on. This basically is when you're gonna start adding in the sound. So once you kind of get them comfortable with that, you're going to turn on the Dremel and you're going to reward. You're going to use the butt of the Dremel when it's on and you're going to rub it on their shoulder, their back, their leg, their feet. Same thing, you're getting them used to the sound of the vibration, or the sound, the sensation of the vibration through the process and you're going to reward if they are content and still. And this might be where it gets more scary again. So basically, if they are not content and still, you're going to work backwards again, same thing. Go back to where they were comfortable, end, and then you can try moving forward next session. It could take a while to build up on this. So you gotta go at your dog's pace. Any signs are becoming frightened if they're creating any sort of negative response. We don't want that. We want to end on a good note and just end it for that day. You can start again, even if you do it at a later time in the day or the next day, just, you know, push forward slowly. Do not go too fast. That will be where you go wrong if you're doing this process. But creating positive conditioning is absolutely crucial. That's what we're working towards. And sometimes we as pet parents might get impatient and push too far too fast. Eventually, if your dog is good with the nail clippers being placed on the foot, you can actually, for the sound portion, use the spaghetti 
and clip the spaghetti in front of them and then also you're going to work your way down the body but clipping the spaghetti you can hold the spaghetti to them eventually to their feet so the spaghetti is sticking out as you hold the paw and you clip the end of it as if you would their nail essentially to give them the sound and even when you're holding it to their foot it gives them a sense of vibration as well once they are relaxed and willing this is when you're finally ready to cut their nails so they're good with the sound they're good with the vibration they're still they're quiet they're not running away they're calm you know they're just laying there or standing there and they're letting you do these things this is when you can advance forward at this point though i would strictly do one nail <laughs> and then reward and end your session i know what you're thinking <laughs> you're never going to get anywhere but it's very important because if you try to do too many at once, this is when they might, hey, I remember this, I don't like this, and then slide backwards. So if you do one and offer a reward and end it, they're like, hey, hang on, that wasn't so bad. So ideally, you work up to doing so many. So if they allow you to do one the one day, maybe do two the next day, and then three and then four, and you're gonna work your way up that way. One paw, two paws, three paws, four paws. You know what I mean? You're just, take it slow. But remember, it will also depend on what category your dog falls into, the ones that we talked about at the start of the video. So if they are on the high end of the spectrum, they need medication and everything, this could be a very long process for you, although very rewarding in the end, so it's whether they tolerate it, they accept it. Maybe they think it's the most frightening thing on the planet. It could span weeks, it could span months. It's just gonna depend on what their conditioned response is currently and then kind of counter conditioning. So the more you have to do, the longer it's gonna take. And in some cases, as I said, it could take months. So just prepare yourself for that. But I do know that some of you are probably struggling at home already with your dog's nails and they're probably really long already. So in the meantime, while you're working on the conditioning, I would suggest maybe using what is called like a scratch board or a scratch pad. And if you Google them, you can check out some really cool ones. You can learn to make your own even. There's lots of cool YouTube videos on them. I'll try and link some below for you. And you can you can build them yourself. You can buy them as well. And it doesn't involve touch by the clippers or by dremels and not even really by you. I mean, you have to hold the scratch board in most cases, although if you could maybe build a freestanding one. And in no way it involves manipulating their feet. So it is a really nice alternative while you're waiting for a positive conditioned response to form to the nail clippers and dremel. So obviously once you have worked up to the nail clipping and grinding aspect, this is the point that you're gonna wanna refer to my video on the proper way to clip nails with the alternative cut lines. So check out that video right here and don't forget to hit like and subscribe and don't forget to comment below and let me know where your dog falls on that scale because that actually does help me shape my content in order to help you guys and what your needs are. So drop a comment. Let me know below.